Luke chapter 3 and uh, verse 1. Now in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip was tetrarch of the region of Iturea and Trachonitis, and Licinius was tetrarch of Abilene, in the high priest of An- and, and in the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness, and he came into all the district around Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make ready the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Every ravine shall be filled up and every mountain and hill shall be brought low. And the crooked shall become straight and the rough road smooth and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Now this is the beginning of the Christmas season. For some, uh, for some uh, retailers, it's been going on already. And when, we, when it comes to Christmas, you know, I already talked to you about uh, Nepal and Bangladesh and how important it is to them to tell the story of Christmas because so many people there don't know the story. I wonder if we're very, very much different and whether people really know the story. This last week I was talking to one of our children and he told me um, from our church here and I said, uh, how you doing? He said, oh, I just love Thanksgiving and it's great and I love to get away from school. I stayed up late, played video games, watched TV, had a great time. And he said, and then just, we have to go back to school for maybe two or maybe three weeks and then we have winter break. And I said, oh, yeah, I love that. Don't you just love that? Just a few days, and then you get break again, you know? And I wasn't about to tell him I didn't appreciate what he called it. But I know where he got it. He got it at school. Because it's at his school, I guess, they must call it winter break. We call it Christmas. We call it Christmas for a reason. It's because it's, the, it's one of the most important days of all of the year. Now, we see Easter as the highest holy day. We see Easter as the big day. But Christmas, you can't have Easter without Good Friday, and you can't have Good Friday without Christmas. So Christmas is ultimately very important. And when you think about Christmas today, how in the world are you going to do what this says? Listen listen to verse 4. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, the voice of the one calling on the wilderness, make ready the way of the Lord. Make ready. So the message this morning is, get yourself ready for Christmas. Get yourself ready for Christmas. Now I know what first thing you start thinking about. Can I afford it? What am I going to buy? What do my kids want? What do my grandkids want? Everything becomes about the money and how much it costs. Christmas is about money in America, isn't it? My grandchildren, bless their hearts, they're old enough, every one of them, to get on, and I don't mean the ones just here, all of them are old enough to get on Amazon and have a wish list. Amen? How many of you know that people in your life have wish lists, things they want? My grandkids know if they put it on the wish list on Amazon, Grandma will buy some of that stuff. Except for you, Alex. <laughs> Alex, your grandmother has already bought you something off your wish list. I think it was toothpicks or something. I'm not sure. What is it about these kids? They already are looking, preparing the way for Christmas. And now we stand back as Christians. This is our great day. And the world around us, this country, and maybe just Western civilization, has stolen Christmas from us. Haven't they? I mean, it's stolen. And we do things like, Jesus is the reason for the season, right? And we think that's cute. Isn't that great? I love that. But why do we have to do that? Why is it we have to fight for people to even remember that it's Christmas? 
I had one little thing up that said, Christmas starts with Christ. It's the Christ Mass. Christmas, it's Christ is the issue of Christmas. But it's so hard in our, in our culture to get it separated. I remember one family that lived near us in Ohio, a good Christian family, and uh, they just would not give gifts on Christmas. They gave them after Christmas. Now, our family, we have decided in order to see them every year at Christmas time, we have told the kids, come home for, for New Year's. Go to your in-laws for Christmas. Stay at your own house for Christmas, but after, come here. And so every year they'll come, and most years all of them are there. But it's after Christmas. You know what that's done for us? We don't have, we don't have presents at Christmas. We have them at New Year's <laughs> when they all show up. But Christmas becomes a special day. Do you know what day of the month it is this year? Well, it's the 25th, right? It's the 25th. Do you know what day of the week it is? Sunday. Don't you dare stay home on Sunday, the 25th. Be here. Honor God on his highest day he gave for you. And I know, I know it's going to be hard for some of you. One year we had Christmas Eve service, Christmas morning service, and, and some came Eve, and came Saturday night, some came Sunday morning. This year, I'm telling you, put Christ first in Christmas and be in church. Now, we will have it, what, 6.30 in the morning? No. 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 sunrise. Because all the kids want to run down. We're going to do it probably, I don't know, 9.30, 10. I don't know. We'll, we'll have a special time for it. But here's the problem, people. Listen, when I was a kid, I got saved when I was eight. Started going to the Salvation Army. Every Christmas, every Christmas, without missing one, we were in church on Christmas morning. Not when it was on Sunday only, but every Christmas. Do you know what the, the sign of a godly person was? The arrogant one? We didn't open our presents until after we went to church. Aren't we proud? What was really funny is when some dude walks in with a new sweater on, and we all go, ooh, sinner. We, it was a joke. We opened presents whenever you wanted to. Most of them was Sunday night, the night before. But the issue is, this is God's day. It's his biggest day. He sends his son for us. Prepare for his coming. And so what I want you to do this month is prepare for Christmas morning. Now, I understand if you have family that says we want you here, you need to decide whom you will honor first. All you have to say to relatives is, hey, we'll be there. The pastor said we're going to have service. It won't be real long, and it will not be. It'll be a short service. We will sing carols. We will do some things, and I will preach, and I guarantee it will not be long. And then you can go. And you can say to your friends and your relatives, we'll be there, but we'll get there at 11. Because the service is at 9.30, and we're going to be un done by 10.30, and you can get there. And some of you say, well, we go early. Well, excuse yourself. Who do you honor at Christmas first? Him. Him. And if you have any influence, then influence your family and say, yeah, we get up at 6 o'clock. Well, good. Just remind them, you ladies cook breakfast for them or whatever and say, but I'm going to be at worship, 9.30. Why? Because you are preparing for his coming for Christmas. So you start now. You start warning, you start telling, you start announcing now. You say, who's first? Christ is first. So when I thought about this message, and wrote this out on my fancy nice paper, I thought, how do we prepare for his coming? Well, I think the first thing you do is start reflecting. That's number one, guys. You start reflecting. I think it's always good to take time to look inside. Are you ready? Are you ready to have him come in? Are you ready to have him come to your house and sit down? Are you ready for him? Are you prepared? Isaiah said, prepare or make ready. Prepare the way of the Lord. Get ready. Get ready for Christmas. Get ready for that day when, when we enjoy his coming, when we celebrate God giving us gifts. And listen, you can manufacture any way you want 
to make Christmas sound Christian about giving gifts and Christmas trees and all, that's fine. But the reality is none of that has to do with Christmas, the real Christmas. Okay, God gave his gifts so we can give gifts. Okay, that's called making up a reason. Fine. I don't think it's wrong, but it's not Christmas. Christmas is Jesus came. Amen? That's real Christmas. The rest, secular culture. Is it bad? No. I like gifts too. Okay? But it's not Christmas. Christmas is Jesus coming. And so you reflect. You look back at your heart and you say, you know, this would be a good thing to do at some point. Throughout this month, what is it I actually believe? Take some reflecting. Sit down sometime and say, what is it that I really believe? When you start thinking about what you believe, I don't mean what you say you believe or what you intellectually say you believe. I'm saying, what do you really believe? And that's how you act. And that's what you do. And how you respond, that's what you really believe. What you really believe is how you're living. So how are you living? You know, one of the, one of the interesting things about, about our, our process when we, we take you through discipleship, and one of the things we do is we talk about how you handle your money. It's interesting that every Christian organization that has anything to do with finances will tell you number one thing is giving. Number one. I do not want, and you know when Dave Ramsey has his thing that you draw a line and say, I can pay all these things, but I can't pay these. Right? And you draw a line. And the company calls you and says, you haven't made your credit card payment this month. Why not? And you say, I'm sorry, you're below the line. And the person says, what do you mean I'm below the line? They'll say, I have a budget. And this is there, this is there, my house is there, you know, food is there. And then there's this line, and I'm out of money. And you don't get any until I get more money. And the guy will say, what? You say, well, I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. But I'll tell you what you don't want to do. Hello, Lord. How's it going? Ooh. Giving. Mm. I'm sorry. You're below the line. Good luck with that one. It won't, it won't honor God that way. You need to reflect on your life and say, where am I in what I really believe? Not in what I say. Not in what I want. I intend. Well, I intend to do that. I intend to be kind, but then I get angry and then I'm not kind. Well, which are you judged by? What you intended or what you actually did? Well, I didn't intend to swear but, and use foul language, but God knows. Yeah, God knows. It's what you do that makes a difference. And so, yeah, look at your life and you start evaluating. What do I really believe? What really difference has God made in my life this year? Wouldn't that be a good thing to reflect? How have I changed? So in preparing for his coming, do some reflecting. How have I really been doing this year? How have I grown spiritually? What has God transformed in my life? You know, what have I been, you know, have I been kinder this year? Have I, last year I had things I used to do all the time and now I don't do those things? And last year I used to do a lot of things that, or I didn't do some things and now I'm doing those good things and boy, my life is changing. Okay, am I more like Christ? Or am I just kind of better a little? See, some people will just, instead of reflecting, they'll just lie to themselves. And they'll say, well, I'm okay. But you're not okay. When you do some reflecting, it's about God saying, saying to him, Psalm 1, there's a verse to write down, guys. Psalm 139, verse 23. Search my heart, O God. See if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Search my heart, O God. Boy, take some time preparing for Christmas by searching your heart. And you can even go to someone and say, hey, help me out. I wouldn't advise you go to some mean person, but go to some nice, godly Christian and say, help me out. So what do you see? I think I'm doing better at this. What do you think? And, and be ready, because if they're honest, you might not like it. But if you're really going to reflect, you got to be honest. And sometimes it takes someone else to say it to you, to help you being honest. You know? Yeah, you think you're better, but you know what? You're still, you're still hurting people. You think you're better, but you're still not doing that. 
do some healthy reflecting. Psalm 51 verse 10 says to create in me a new heart. Create in me a new heart. Proverbs 4.23 says, guard my heart. Guard your heart. Be careful about your heart. Reflect, reflect, reflect. Look inside, people. Look inside, see what's there. Matthew 5, 8 says that God blesses, blessed are those who are pure in heart. This is about reflecting. The second thing, you need to do some repenting. Now, let me tell you what I see people doing. I see people saying, yeah, I'm not so good, or I'm not that bad, and, and they'll admit, yeah, yeah, I have a, a problem with that. That's not repentance. Repentance is not admitting there's a problem. That's not repentance. It's interesting because John the Baptist says, in his, very, in his beginning of his preaching there in verse 3, he prayed a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. If you want forgiveness for sins that you are committing now as a Christian, repent. Don't just say, well, you know, and I'm, not as good as, I'm not as bad as I used to be, and I don't do it as much. No, that's just confession. Repentance is, I will stop. That's repentance. Anything else is confession. And you don't get anywhere with confession. That's part of repentance. Repentance requires, first of all, Lord, search my heart. See what's wrong. Help me prepare for Christmas, for your coming. This month, I'm going to take this month to do some preparing inside. And when you begin to show me stuff, I'm repenting. When you look inside and the Lord says, well, you're doing better here, but it's not that good. And you need to change this, this, and this. You start really asking God to search your heart. And guess what he does? He shows you things. And I guarantee you, if you're honest, God will show you things. And if you'll just say, oh, well, it's not all, then you're not repenting. The message of Jesus. What's interesting about Jesus' first preaching? Do you know Jesus came preaching? You know what message he preached? Repent. He re-preached John the Baptist's message. Repent. Repent. There's nothing going to happen in your life until you repent. And when you repent, you get on your knees. You know, every time we have an invitation, you ought to be down here. And I, I, you're sitting there saying, what? Not every time. Really? Why not? Why not? Why not every time God stirs in your heart, you get down on your knees? Say, all right, God, I want it fixed. I, I, I remember one young preacher said to me, uh, do you expect people to come forward every time you preach? And I said, yes. When you give them an invitation, I expect them to. Do they always? No. Why not? No. Because if you want a real pure heart, you're at the altar a lot. Not once in a while, a lot. And you're saying, oh God, search my heart. Oh God, change me. You want to get ready for Christmas? Forget all the catalogs, forget all that junk, and get on your knees and ask God to search your heart and start repenting and letting God forgive and cleanse. You can be ready for his coming. The third thing, I want you to think about reflecting, I want you to think about repenting, and then the third thing, I need you to read. You need to read. And somebody's saying, oh, read. There he is with the read thing. The Bible does say study to show yourself approved. Now, uh, Todd and I had a great time this week. We watched a video together. It was excellent. I'm going to put it up on the website. and It's a, a thing called the Bible, Bible Project, right? Bible Project, right? Great overview of every book they have. It's great. I watched Esther. I watched several others. I watched the rest of Esther, by the way. All of it, you know. Uh, several others. And great quick overview. But you're not going to get challenged. And you're not going to get insights. Maybe some. But what a great way to get to know the Bible. My suggestion to you is, if I don't get it written down too quickly, write this down. Bible, just in Google. Just go you can Google or you can Bing anything, right? I use Bing. I, I rebel at Google. Type in Bible Project, and up will come a Bible site that's called Bible Project. They're free to download. And watch the videos of some of the books of the Bible. If you're going to start to read a book of the Bible, then go to the Bible Project and watch their video first. It's usually about seven, eight minutes long. Give you a great overview of the Bible. Except, um, I think Isaiah and 
Jeremiah are like two videos. Or so some of them are two videos. But what a great way to start. But I want to challenge you to do something this Christmas to get ready for Christmas. Mary Jo has uh, uh, written out scriptures to read and little comments she has put in for you to do 24 days before Christmas. 20. 20 days before Christmas. So if you start today, you'll be done the night before Christmas. And I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to send it to you this afternoon. Email it to you. Uh, it's not, a, or I could put it on the, I might put it on the website too. Um, so if I don't have your email, if you don't get it this afternoon, call me and I'll send it to you. And it'll take you a whole, oh, I don't know what, 45, 50 seconds to read. Come on, people, this is two minutes long, probably. 90 seconds, sorry. This is not major reading, but it's a way of preparing yourself for his coming. And it's just a scripture every day to read related to Christmas. My suggestion is you read it as a family. We're going to read it this afternoon. When we get home and we cook lunch together and we sit down, we're going to read it today. And my challenge to you is read it together with your family. Read it to your kids. It won't take that long. <laughs> I'm certain they will spend more time watching the football game and getting on the internet. And they won't miss much of that in two minutes to read. Okay? Read, reflect, repent. And then the last thing, see I told you it was short. The last thing was to remove the distractions. Now this one is probably the hardest. How do you focus your mind on Jesus? Hebrew says, fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of your faith. How do you fix your mind on Jesus when the, when the TV is blurting out happy holidays and, well, sometimes they say Merry Christmas and, you know, and, and, you know whatever they do, but it's all about buying things, you know. You're going to have to play some Christmas music in your home. Remove the distractions of the world. Watch some good Christian videos. Watch some good Christian movies. I'm not sure some of the ones that are popular are all that Christian. But you watch some things about Jesus. Get on, listen, ask, if you have kids, ask your kids, hey, find us something good on YouTube because they can find anything they want on YouTube. Listen, you can fix anything, you can find anything on YouTube. Find something good on YouTube and watch it every day. Is that so hard? Is that really so hard to prepare for his coming? Spend every day watching something, removing the distractions, the, all the parties, the commercials, the hype. Okay, here's the phrase you need to write down. Learn to say no. Well, there's an awful lot of things that happen at Christmas you need to learn to say no to. No, I'm not going to watch that. No, I'm not going to do that. No, nope, going to be in church. Nope, can't do that. Got a Bible study. Nope, no kids. No, I don't care. We don't have a DVR. Doesn't matter. Sorry, we're reading the scripture today about Jesus. We are preparing our hearts for his coming. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to learn to say no. You say yes to things that will lift you up spiritually. And to the others, you say yes and maybe and no. But to the things that will bless you spiritually, things that will help you focus on Jesus. You adults, you come to the dinner we're having together at, in December so you can say, yes, I am preparing my heart. There will be things at that dinner that will help you prepare for Christmas. And you know there are other things you're going to be asked to go to that are not going to prepare you for Jesus. And those you say, yes, maybe, or no. But those are negotiable. But things that bless you, those aren't negotiable. Those are primary. Those come first. So if you're going to prepare the way for your own heart, you've got to start by doing some decent reflecting. And if you need help with it, call somebody and say, I've been asking God to search my heart, and here are four things i got, and what do you think? And then do some good repenting. Lord, I don't want to be like that. Lord, I want to be prepared for your coming. Wouldn't it be great if Christmas Sunday 
We just stand here and we just celebrate. Look what God has done this month in preparing for you, God. This is wonderful. You're a great God. Wouldn't it be great if we could sing like the shepherds? Rejoicing. And come like the, the magi and put our gifts before the Lord. And say, Lord, here is my heart. Here is my life. Here are my talents. Here are my abilities. They're all yours because ultimately, God, it's all about you. I've been preparing for your coming all month. Let's prepare for Christmas morning what God can do in us. Forget the hype. Forget the commercials. Forget the gifts. And remember Jesus. That's how you honor him at Christmas. Let's bow our heads and let's pray.